All right, 112, folks, since we're going to talk about uh, treaties and the time period, I figured I, I would wear my uh, hat to look authentic for the time period itself. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on, which I have to remember this, is that um, there's a lot of economics going on, but one of the things that happens after World War I is something called uh, isolationism. Um, the Brits withdraw and go back to their islands, and they want to stay there. They want to deal with the empire. We go home, and we just want to deal with us. We want to deal with our national economy, and we're actually doing pretty good. It's booming at first, but we know that what happens in Europe is going to happen with us. I want to talk about the economy in the next video. What I want to talk about at this point is Hitler's rise to power, because with Hitler rising up, what's going to happen is this and his process of making Germany great again. And you can put that on whatever hat you want to at this particular point. What he needs to do is he needs to restore the boundaries of the old Germany. He needs to put the people back to work. He needs to go ahead and take what used to be a great military industrial machine and restore it. The problem is, is that's all against the Treaty of Versailles. And so what he's going to do is he's going to start to push against the boundaries. He's going to start to push against the treaty. Um, if you don't have a two-year-old, three-year-old, then borrow somebody else's, and you'll find something uh, pretty interesting, is they're going to test the boundaries. Um, and every time that you give them a little space, they're going to push harder and ask for a little bit more space. And so here's what will happen is Great Britain's going to go home. Um, France is going to go home and watch their boundaries. Um, they're going to make sure that uh, Great uh, that Germany is paying their reparations. And they're going to take the reparations and they're going to put them into a series of fortifications on the line between Germany and France called the Maginot Line. Um, M-A-G-I-N-O-T, imagine no. They're building a series of fortresses. They're building a wall, right? We've heard that before. They're building a wall to keep Germany out. And the idea being is they're going to build this wall between them and Germany. So if Germany ever attacks, they'll be able to defend themselves. But this wall ends at the border of Belgium because they're at peace with Belgium. They don't want a wall. They don't need fortifications between them and Belgium. And so what's going to happen is this. As Hitler grows in power, he's going to start pushing against the boundaries. He's going to start slowly breaking the treaty. Um, to do this, um, it comes in kind of handy. What will happen is in uh, Spain, we're dealing with the Spanish Civil War. And the Spanish Civil War is going to be the democratic versus versus socialist uh, factions. Um, but the idea that it's a civil war, just the Spanish fighting, is a misnomer. Um, you're going to have factions from the United States. You're going to have factions from France. You're going to have factions uh, from Great Britain, from Germany. You're going to have units fighting under the guise uh, of helping Spain. And what's going to happen is Germany is going to have uh, units of German troops. They're going to have uh, units of the German Air Force. There is no German Air Force. It's against the treaty. You know, but you're going to have the beginnings of the Luftwaffe. They're going to go in and they're going to use this battleground as a means to practice new tactics, new weapons, uh, new all sorts of things are happening here because this will be the training ground for the next great war. And so um, even though Hitler is limited on the troops he has, well, the fact is he can have an entire army in Spain and claim that it's not his army. He can have an entire air force and claim it's not his air force. And that's what he's going to do. He's just going to build up these troops. He's going to practice this new, this blitzkrieg, right? This lightning warfare. And so there's a lot of stuff going on at this particular point, and they're going to build up the strength. As they build up the strength, what he'll do is he'll start to push back. He'll push against the borders and try to reclaim chunks of what you used to be Germany that they lost in the treaty. And so what's going to do is uh, he's going to successively, time and time and time again, break the treaty. And what will happen is France will go to Great Britain and say, hey, Chamberlain, you need to do something about this. We are, we're going to end up in a war. This is going to happen. And Chamberlain, Chamberlain will come in and say, okay, listen, let me go ahead and talk to Adolf. Let's go ahead and settle this. We don't need another war. That's the last thing we need. And what he'll do is he'll go in and he'll make a deal with the Germans. And what will happen is Hitler will say, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, Chamberlain, uh, we just needed some Lebensraum, right? Lebensraum, some living room, some living space. And we just have to stretch out. We have to industrialize. We have to reclaim. We have to redo. And then what will happen is uh, Chamberlain's going to come in and go, you know, Adolf, don't do this. He's going to give him a slap on the wrist. And he's going to say, okay, you go ahead and keep what you've done, but don't take any more. 
And Hitler would say, okay, we, we won't break the treaty this way again. We will not do this again. And so they established, they established a policy of appeasement. Uh, we're going to go ahead and appease the French. We're going to go ahead and appease the Germans. We're not going to accomplish anything. We're just going to keep from having a war. And that's really what they're trying to do is they're trying to keep from having a war. And so what's going to do is Hitler is slowly going to gain ground, slowly going to gain momentum, slowly build up his forces. And what will happen is he's going to cut some deals. We know he makes a, a deal with uh, Mussolini. He's also going to cut a deal with Stalin. He's going to sign what, what becomes a non-aggression pact because what he's trying to do is he's pushing his boundaries. So he's going to go ahead and talk to Russia and, and uh, Soviet Union, pardon me, is on the outs with Western Europe. Uh, Germany is on the outs with Western Europe. Germany wants to set up some treaties. Um, the folks over in the League of Nations are going to say, Germany, you can't create any new treaties until you make all your reparations. Germany's going to leave the meeting. The Soviet Union's going to leave the meeting. They're going to cut their own deal. Germany's going to say, hey, Soviet Union, uh, we will give you back all that territory you gave us to get out of World War I if you go ahead and forgive us our reparations. And Stalin and company are going to say, hey, yeah, that's not a bad deal. We get our territory back. Uh, we're not going to get the money we weren't getting in the first place. And so they're going to agree uh, not to attack each other and to be at peace. And what will also happen is Germany is going to talk to them about saying, hey, listen, um, a good chunk of our territory was given to Poland, give them access to the sea that kind of uh, created, carved a corridor through the middle of Germany. We would really like to take back our chunk of Poland. And the Soviet Union is going to say, you know what? Part of Poland is actually ours. So if you go in and take your chunk and give us our chunk, then, then we promise not to attack you. We promise not to react. Um, the boundaries, the treaty has been broken time and time and time again. He's going to invade Czechoslovakia. You know, at one point, and what will happen, the appeasement policy will give him that chunk of Czechoslovakia, and he'll say, okay, well, I won't take any more. Then he's going to turn around and take whoo, the rest of Czechoslovakia. Well, his taking, okay, his taking uh, of um, <clears throat> Poland is going to trigger the French entry into the war. It's going to be the cue that forces them to go ahead, and his bombing, an invasion of Warsaw, Poland with the Messerschmitt bombers is going to be the cue that actually begins the war. Um, they will also, you know, go ahead and they'll implement the old von Schlieffen plan. It's like, hey, listen, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, and cut through uh, Belgium. We're going to go ahead and invade France. And, and except for this time, because they have the Blitzkrieg, because they have the, uh, the air support, they're going to find out that uh, it's incredibly effective. Rather than being stalled 20 miles outside of Paris, um, they're going to be in Paris before the French know what's happening. Um, by the time the British can react and they can go land at Dunkirk, well, it, it's too late. They've already taken this chunk of France. And so what happens is because the rest of the world is in the economic dumpster, okay, because the rest of the world is tired from, from this whole last war thing. It's only been, what, 20 years, if that? Um, they're not ready for another war. And by the time they decide, okay, we're ready for war, it's too late. The German juggernaut's already unleashed. And so what I want to talk about in this next one is talk about um, our version of the Great Depression. What happens in the United States, um, what we do and don't do, and how we try to fix the Great Depression, thanks to Roosevelt and the New Deal, and then how we get involved in this whole war fiasco. All right, that's it for now.